Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm John. It is October 22nd, 2021, and today I come to you with uh, another review. I found this book a few months ago at a library, not a book sale, but a little annex that's attached to the front of my local library, where they occasionally just uh, sell donated books, books they've pulled out of circulation and stuff like that. And I saw this from across the room and was just um, sort of interested in it. Um, you can see the title there is In the Heat of the Night, the original Virgil Tibbs novel. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, it's by John Ball. The, the cover art there might be evocative of a, a certain movie you've seen, as is the, the title, of course. Um, like I said, I found this uh, book at a book sale several months ago. I'm kind of a big fan of Penguin Classics. I think a lot of people in this area of Booktube are. And uh, I think I recognize most of them on site, at least the, the names and the authors. But the name John Ball didn't ring any bells. Uh, of course, In the Heat of the Night did. It's... Uh, if anyone too young is watching this, it is the name of a movie, excuse me. Um, it came out in, I think, 1967, uh, starring Sidney Poitier, who was uh, the greatest actor of his generation, uh, in my opinion. Uh, for full disclosure, I have never seen the movie. Um, I know of a few differences between the movie and the book, but I've never seen the movie. But... Um, that that famous line from the new from the movie, uh, they call me Mr. Tibbs, is actually taken straight from the book without any um, editing or or um, or messing with. They just pulled it straight from the book. Uh, this edition, um, as you can tell uh, from the little thing, uh, why is this so tiny um, and blurry? Yikes! Need to clean off my webcam. Um, it's the 50th anniversary edition. The book was published in uh, 1965, and this obviously came out in, 19, uh, in 2015. So anyone who follows my reviews on my channel will know that this is not the kind of book that I ordinarily review on a regular basis. You can kind of tell what, if you've never heard In the Heat of the Night before, you can tell kind of what we're talking about by the cover art. It's not even the kind of book I talk about on an irregular basis, to be honest. Uh, I can't even remember the last time <laughs> I picked up a piece of fiction with considerable police procedural or detective elements in it. But aside from trying to be diligent about talking and reviewing every book that I read, I also thought that the novel is really by turn smart and bitingly insightful uh, about the bigoted world of the racist American South in the years leading up to uh, and of the Civil Rights Movement. So what's it about? The, uh, the plot is set in the tiny town of Wells, South Carolina, which is actually apparently a place. Um, I don't know if he, if he meant to evoke the real place of Wells, but it does exist. Uh, we have a policeman whose name is Sam Wood, and he discovers the body of a local, uh, the head of a local music festival, who has just recently showed up. The, the uh, festival promises to be a big moneymaker for the community that very much needs some economic um, boosterism. Uh, in the film, by the way, the, the body belongs to a wealthy industrialist, not uh, the head of a music festival. It's one of the differences between the film and the book. Uh, at a nearby train station, uh, Wood sees an African-American man waiting to take a train out of town. And with no other evidence, uh, aside from the fact that he's black in the wrong time in the wrong place, the 1960s in South Carolina, um, Woods arrests him on suspicion of, of murder. But he quickly realizes that the man 
isn't actually a murderer at all, and irony of ironies, he's actually a homicide detective who's visiting from out of state. Um, I think in the novel it's Philadelphia. I think he's visiting from Philadelphia. Um, visiting a family or something. Um, it's mentioned in passing in the novel. Um, so, so it's sort of an interesting turn of events to find out that he's uh, a, a murder detective back home. So he contacts his supervisor back home, asks if he can stay on. It's this tiny little southern police department with not a lot of resources. And here he is, this, uh, this uh, detective from a big city who's probably seen, uh, you know, had a lot of practice. So he figures that they might be able to use his help. So he says yes. Uh, Tibbs assists uh, Sam Wood and his sheriff. Um, he's he's uh, constantly talked down to, condescended to, second guessed, followed around, asked questions of. Um, I mean, after all, he's black, so how could he possibly be smart enough to investigate a murder and find a murderer, right? Uh, Wood is put in charge of Tibbs, uh, as if, I, like I said, as if he needs to be overlooked uh, like a child. Uh, while Wood and the sheriff bumble around, making sort of artless, clueless stabs in the dark as to who the perpetrator might be, Tibbs is a really scrupulous, really smart uh, observer of evidence. He questions the assumptions he makes relentlessly, and he doesn't draw any conclusions unless they're airtight. Meanwhile, we see a couple of episodes in which Wood and the sheriff uh, share a lot of the racist assumptions with other, uh, with the other residents of Wells, uh, despite having Tibbs uh, make all the ostensible progress on the case. Uh, I won't share the ending here, but I'm sure it probably will come as no surprise that it is Virgil Tibbs in the end who ends up finding the murderer and without the aid of anyone else. Tibbs is always <laughs> the smartest man in the room. Always the smartest man in the room. But whereas a white officer could readily point that out, even if he's joking, Tibbs, being a black man in the South, is forced into the position of being perpetually humble and self-effacing about his own abilities. Uh, even to the point of almost dropping pieces of evidence he's found into the hands of the sheriff so that he can pat his own back for having discovered it himself. Uh, the mystery involving the procedural aspects of the novel sort of drew me in. Of course, also the name recognition of the book. But what really kept me interested in, in reading, was the sharp social commentary. And... Uh, uh, that's really embedded in the action and the dialogue. So if anyone has any recommendations about books, maybe uh, in the genres that have that sort of same social uh, commentary going on, um, I don't know, um, any fans of uh, Neil Marsh or, um, or Dorothy Sayers or uh, Deshiel Hammett or or anyone else. I've I've never read any of them uh, except for a couple of stories of uh, Dorothy Sayers. But um, if there's any of that social commentary going on, uh, let me know. Where does one start to find stuff like that? Did I just get lucky? <laughs> I'm sure I didn't. I'm sure there's more out there. I just don't know uh, where it is. So um, if anyone knows, uh, leave me a comment below. And if you've read this novel by John Ball in the Heat of the Night, the original Virgil Tibbs novel. And by the way, it says the original Virgil Tibbs novel because over the course of Ball's life, he went on to write. Uh, he lived another 20 years after he wrote this, and he came out with about another, I think, five or six more Virgil Tibbs novels. I believe this is the only one that was actually dramatized. But uh, there are more out there. I don't know if any of them are in Penguin Classics versions. But please leave me a comment, and I will uh, respond. And I will see everyone next week. Bye.